So I just got finished watching the book trailer for George Monbiot's latest book, Regenesis, and I there's an awful lot I want to say about this trailer, and there's an awful lot of um, things I want to say about the issues that he raises in the trailer, and. Um, I think probably the best way to begin with that conversation is it was is a very it has to be necessary a very long and protracted discussion it has to be again a sort of 30 40 minute video unpacking all the elements of this that are correct all of the elements of it that are not quite the truth for instance he picks facts seemingly out of midair by saying um something uh, uh, he's trying to allude to um, this notion that only 1% of our protein comes from livestock. That's sort of what he's trying to allude to, but what he says is a bit more acute than that. He says 1% um, of our protein comes from livestock that have been fed grass alone. I extensively reared livestock. And that's that's probably the truth. That probably is the truth. The overwhelming majority of livestock that we consume, firstly, um, pigs, for instance, those don't eat grass at all, typically. Um, they're not grazed animals. They're not ruminants either. Likewise, chickens don't eat grass. Only ruminant livestock eat grass. So um, only uh, cattle, sheep, goats, etc. Ruminants, right? The animals with four stomachs, only those are grazed. Um, so yeah, he, he probably is right about that. And um, he says we could, but then he also says something else that we could be gaining all of um, the protein that we do gain from animal produce, which by the way, the protein that we gain from animal produce is about 46% of the protein in our diets. So it's quite a substantial amount of protein. And in his little like trailer for his little cash-in book, sorry to say um yeah he does just look like he's trying to drop a neat little um fact or statistic that could uh that is kind of amenable to his message and that's kind of um, amenable to the veganic message if you like or the vegan message and it's like again fine and then he's trying to say we can we can consume nuts to gain all of these proteins like you're nuts. <laughs> you are nuts. If you think we can gain it all from nuts. No, like, do you know how much water goes into the cultivation of nut trees as well? <sighs> like, and again, like, the reason why we can't cultivate nuts, it comes down to soil type. And the fact that climate, temperature, topology, topography, it all changes internationally. You can't grow nuts everywhere. <sighs> nuts don't grow on all soil types in the United Kingdom. Um, we have like horse chestnuts and things, and native species of nuts that, um, yeah, we can consume. But I mean, um, I don't think we're going to be gaining a very balanced, nutritious diet just from eating nuts alone. And um, I don't think many vegans even consider that as a possibility. That we just consuming nuts. No. We need a supplement the diets for soy and coconuts and things like well which are nuts i suppose but um yeah and then he later on in the video he defends um soy as well and i know where all your nuts are coming from they're all coming from huge plantations in the tropics they're all, they're all being farmed in the same places that uh, on what used to be rainforest where the coconuts are being farmed which are nuts i guess and where soy is being farmed and all this sort of thing is that like you're just cutting down yet more rainforest firstly for your ideological vanity and secondly well just for that just for your vanity just for having you know this appraisal of yourself you know you need to be the most on message you need to be the most left way you need to be the best leftist that's what you're really all trying to be so like, what's the next way to be the best leftist? Oh, it's to be a vegan. Oh, we're all going to become vegan. How fucking predictable. And um, that's how it works, you know, and you they, they get into the onto the bandwagon, they get indoctrinated, um, and it's a kind of a sharp elbows pissing contest of ideology, and they just want to, you know, be the most on message and on point. And really, when you get into that sort of stuff, it must be incredibly authoritarian. And I don't, yeah, like particularly care for that. But moving on with the other things that he said in the video. So he's the the big sort of foregrounding point that he makes right at the end of this Regenesis video is um 
it's about cultured meat, right? It's about cultured meat and dairy and these sorts of produce uh, products, which are um, you know gonna gonna you know use far less land. We can uh, rewild huge areas of the countryside and so on, and do all this sort of stuff. Is that like, I fully support cultured meat. I think cultured meat would be a great innovation. I think cultured meat would be a fantastic way of us being able to de-intensify. Um, livestock farming and move away from more intensive forms of livestock farming which um, for one thing for one very crucial thing is going to provide a far better life for the animals involved and um, give them a, a life that's as close to the sort of lives they'd have in nature um, as humanly possible um, Secondly, it will increase thereby the quality of the produce we consume and it will raise the uh, the quality of the meat and dairy that we consume dra dramatically, I think. And um, yeah, we could uh, be on course for having like, a very, very good meat market indeed. And um, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with cultured meat at all. I, I very much support the idea. However, I think it's being touted and greenwashed as something of a of a fix or cure when it just isn't that. And it does have inputs, and those inputs will also be coming from agriculture. At scale, it's been demonstrated at a small scale. Again, this is something vegans trip up over routinely. Um, they they can't seem to acknowledge that it takes coconut plantations and soy plantations and all these plantations in the tropical regions of what used to be rainforest around the world to support a few hundred thousand vegans in the UK or um, really a few million vegans worldwide. We cannot all be vegan. We have to like, remove all the rainforest from the planet and only farm soy and then, and then some and keep cutting down whatever we can cut down and then grow it, I don't know, under the sea or something. And that is the reality of it. <laughs> and yet, like, land use, it's, it's, not, it's not being wasted, honestly. Like, nothing about land use in our agricultural economy is wasted at all. No, it isn't. We, the only reason we farm livestock on these huge tracts of land, because it's only good for livestock farming. The soil type, the soil, the, the, the properties of the soil are not amenable to the cultivation of arable crops. That's basically why, and by the way, the, the process of fruit and nut picking and all that sort of stuff is incredibly labor intensive. And we don't have, we don't have the workers for one thing to, um, to replace everything that we consume with nuts and so on. <laughs> And we we also don't have that, you know, so I'm trying to make this like not a ramble, but I'm very bad at organizing videos and doing things like that. But um, yeah, and no, don't fall for this nonsense, please. This is just, this is a man out to make money. This is the, his central concern. He's seeing, he's got a bottled, uh, audience of fanatics, I'm sorry to say, or an audience of whom a large portion of them are fanatics, um, who who wants to be preached to. They have the converted who want to be preached to. He's more than happy to do it, George Monbiot, and um, there's a good and fast buck to be made in the process of doing that, and that, that's why we have this. But I don't necessarily see the... Maybe it's unfair to call them fanatics. Again, I don't think their hearts are in the wrong places at all. And whenever it comes to something that that would increase the welfare of animals or um, give animals a better life on farms and, yeah, revert farming back to a less intensive, more pastoralist, more um, halcyon epoch and away from intensive agriculture which is ugly and horrifying very often um you know we don't we don't want that necessarily as farmers <laughs> definitely not um and like so long as we're we're doing you know the best we can on those levels like, yeah i'd absolutely support cultured meat just to sort of supplement the market it never compete with proper steaks from well-fed beef cattle though 
That's the thing, you just wouldn't get the consistency of it. You'd have to 3D print it for one thing. Um, into the shape of the steak with all the fat cells creating striations of fat throughout the meat and so on. Um, otherwise you just get kind of a mushy thing. It looked like a sort of... I, I've seen 3D printed cultured meat steaks, I think. Um, I bet they're the consistency of a burger, aren't they? No, they don't go properly pink in the middle and they're not... And they, they just don't have a bit of that kind of... that melt in the mouthness to them. Well, they probably have the melt in the mouthness to them, but you also want a steak, I think, to be a bit firm. Not chewy, but just something there. <laughs> like I said, I could talk endlessly about this. In addition to being a farmer, I'm a huge... I have a huge passion for food. I love food, okay? Um, mostly, I, I consider veganism um, to be a, a sort of attack on our culture. <laughs> well, it is one. It's... It's culturally insensitive, to, to my opinion, in my opinion, if anything. I can't have my eggy and bacon and sausagey wassages and so on for breakfast. And for, yeah, to, for mostly to come from the swine. And I can't have my roast beef and all this sort of stuff and my gravy. I can have all your vegan crap. Like, no, I don't think so. And I considered the, the, the consuming of cultured meat to be vegan. Well, no, it's not vegan. You're consuming an animal product. That's fine. Cultured meat can stay, definitely. It will help agriculture enormously. We'll be able to milk fewer cows. Well, we'll have to milk the same number of cows for reasons that I've mentioned elsewhere. That, um, yeah, we would... Because we, we can't culture milk yet. We can't culture cattle's bone marrow. That sounds very hard to do, or to try and do. I imagine it'd be a very fruitful scientific endeavour to attempt it, though. Particularly so far as it pertains to the culturing of human bone marrow in the future, and transplants and things like that. But, um, yeah. I'm, I am now rambling. I think you get the point. It's like, please don't fall for this shit. This... It, it gives the most stilted, misleading picture of, of an unbelievably complicated situation, like, um, picture of things that we don't really fully understand either. Um, you know, that we don't fully understand climate necessarily. What, you know, and that's, that's Freeman Dyson saying that sort of thing, you know, even before he died. Um, being one of the few who's, you know, saying, he was brave enough to actually stand up against it. I do believe in man-made climate change. I do believe that we're contributing to an increase in extreme weather conditions and things such as this. And um, yeah, I do support uh, renewable energy and reducing our uses of fossil fuels and things like this. But um, this whole issue to do with methane in agriculture, is just a distraction. It's nothing more than that. Um, I think, we, no, well, I know about 421 million, sorry, parts per million of carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere, whereas about 1,600 parts per billion of methane is in the atmosphere, irrespective of the fact that it's a 25% more potent, 25 times more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, its relative contribution to the greenhouse effect is still minimal by comparison to CO2 from man-made sources. The overwhelming majority of the uh, the methane in our environment, by the way, does not come from livestock. It does not come from the enteric fermentation in rumen and in ruminant animals. It comes from fertilizer. It comes from the industries that man but mine and manufacture nitrate fertilizers from natural gas. That is where the emissions are really coming from. Should we wean ourselves off ammonium nitrate fertilizer? Absolutely. I've got a totally awesome plan also for something amazing to replace nitrate fertilizer entirely. And it's called cannabis, which is something that we've also been farming basically at our optimum since the Stone Age. <laughs> I think it's that one plant that we that we stumble across as as Stone Age people's like, we need more of it. <laughs> I <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, well, more of this one. <laughs> and then eventually we 
we came across crude oil of all things which allowed us to yeah largely dispense with hemp but that's going to run out in the next 50 years the crude oil so hemp will have to come back and i think necessity one way or another is going to be the mother of invention and it just depends whether or not we have a nuclear bloody war over natural resources before that happens and that's also another thing that likes of mombia fucking distract from <laughs> the very real possibility of nuclear war as a result of resource conflicts and things like this, which is by far and away a more, far more uh, pressing concern internationally and in terms of geopolitics than what people fucking eat, isn't it? Is it not? Is it connected to environmentalism? Of course it is. All the coal and uranium in Ukraine that's being fought over by uh, Putin and so on. Like, yeah, like the, 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 to the greater extent we can um, move over to renewables as soon as humanly possible. Uh, we remove any need, you know, Putin no longer therefore has anyone to sell Ukraine's presumptive reserves of coal to, does he? Because we're no longer interested because we are no longer reliant on it. So fine. Likewise, we should no longer be reliant on their natural gas and their oil, etc., etc. But again, I am rambling. This is what Mombiat deserves as a video response to his stupid little book trailer. And um, oh, please don't buy it. Just don't, don't, like, entertain. Don't, don't give it the respect it deserves. No, give it the respect it deserves by not buying it. Just don't buy that shit, please. You can be, you can do better than that. Don't buy a book like that. Just do high quality research online and research a variety of different sources. And that's probably the best you could hope for. Not reading that man's book.